Hi, this is Meng from Design Plus Code. Today I prepared a huge course for you about Framer Playground. And this is exactly what we're gonna build. You can see this prototype right here. I'm gonna start navigating using the page feature, but also a little bit of overwrite to achieve this result right here. But also if you refresh this, you're gonna see a little bit of stagger animation and it's really nice. Then I'm gonna go to the login page and you can see some really cool looping animation as well as some bloody animation and some of these components are actually interactive as you can see here entering an email and a password so we're going to learn how to achieve those interactions then i'm going to click on this button which is going to go to the main screen where you can prototype some really cool interactions such as this scrolling thing here but also i can swipe this double card ui as you can see like here while the content is still interactive on its own like this. But also if I click here, I go to the second card and the second card is also uh, draggable and scrollable. So I'm gonna go back and voila. And I'm back to my previous state. And you can see how powerful this can be to be able to communicate to your engineers when they're gonna be building this in a real app, when you have something that is so precise and so close to reality. Now, not everything that we see here actually use code. So for example, I'm gonna go to the menu right here and you can see this staggering animation that is just simply using the magic move component where you just need to compose your animation with the begin and the end state. Then you're gonna see the rest of the prototype that is simply linked using the link feature. So it's simply a fade in animation, but each of those screen has their own interaction. So that's really powerful. Then I'm gonna go to the profile page and here we have a back button that simply goes to the previous screen. So I'm gonna click back and voila. And now I'm just gonna go to the course page where I have a very similar setup as the home page. So I can scroll the content just like this. And then I can click the second card and scroll the content of the second card, which is really nice. Now, if you look at the design, you can see that these are all the screens that we have, but we also have micro interactions. For example, let's take a look at this login screen. So I'm gonna play this and I click on the password and then you can see that the keyboard comes up and this is simply using a combination of design components and code components. So I can import, for example, uh, this design component and just to prove it, I can just like move this thing. As you can see, this is a design component that's been imported to this code component where I can basically create this interaction where when I tap on this field, then the keyboard comes up. So we're gonna learn all of that stuff, including how to have property controls, meaning that we can have custom overrides. So for example, I can decide that I don't want an email and instead I want full name, and then I can just change to a different icon. So this is a code component with property controls. What is useful about this is that you can customize, let's say the color, but also what kind of input that you want. And your design system can have its own list of icons that is very custom to your company. So if you go to the team store, you can see that here at Design Plus Go, we have a bunch of components that is shared across all our team members. Let's say I'm a designer or a coder in a team. I can simply go and create a new file and then I'm gonna go to the team store and I can download one of these collection of components. So I can go to the cards, for example, and install this. And once it's installed, I can simply go to my components and open this. And this is where I can reuse those components that my team has created for me. And this can be composed of both design and code components. Now you can see here, this is the list of components that we have throughout the whole project. And if you zoom out, you can see all of the components and all of the techniques applied to the prototype that you just saw. This course comes with a lot of files for each lesson where you're gonna learn about different techniques such as design overrides, animations, layout code, code components, property controls, gestures, sequence, scrolling and parallax, as well as data, you can check the source files for all of those steps. I also prepared a bunch of design system files where this is how you create your team store components. So for example, you would have to create a bunch of these components and then go to the team store and then create the component 
right here. So you choose an icon and then you publish it. Basically the way that it works is that your file is composed of all the components in that collection. So for example, we have a collection of cards and we're going to create a new uh, collection of components and we publish it to the team store. So when you do that, then the next person who is part of your team goes to the store, is going to be able to install you know, the collection of components and they will find those components. Okay, I wanna show you something really interesting because I actually prepared a landing page where we're gonna learn how to do parallax effects. So I'm gonna go to the code component. So this is the code editor where you can edit the code of your components using React hooks and it's really easy. It's using the animation library from Framer and you have to import a bunch of design components let's say from this canvas right here. So all of these are design component imported to my code component called landing page. And here I played with a bunch of speed values as well as stagger animation effects. And this is what's going to happen. So now we have this beautiful landing page with stagger animation, but also look at this. Look at this parallax effect, it's really cool. You can see that each of these elements with different speed create this amazing parallax effect. And you can see that with very minimal amount of code, you create all of that beautiful result. What is really exciting about this is that the frame component, which is basically something that you're gonna use all the time, it's simply using a bunch of CSS properties, such as top, right, background properties, as well as a bunch of custom ones which allows you to animate things such as variants. Now in Framer Playground, you don't have to use the frame for example. You can simply use basic HTML and CSS if you want to. So for example, this input component, I can simply go to the code and you're gonna see that at the very base, we simply have an input HTML tag which is the input. And if you've done a little bit of HTML and a little bit of JavaScript, you can see that the input has a style which is simply using the JavaScript styling, but also normal placeholder stuff for input tag in HTML, where we're using the props from our React component. As you take this course, you're gonna pick up React hooks along the way. Basically, it's a simpler way to write React code. As you can see here, I have my stateful component and I'm using this constant where I can have my state and then I can set state right from this line of code. And then I put my name state right here without the this.state, which is really cumbersome. And then if I wanna change my state, I take the event which is untap, and then I call this function called update name, and then I can set a new state for the name. So this is a really simple component that typically in a normal stateful component would require at least twice the amount of code. And here, if I play this, it should be very simple. So when I click here using the untab event, it's going to run this function and it's going to set a new state. So I click and it changed to my name. And what's beautiful about this is that you have the code editor inside the design tool and then you can just experiment with your code with results running live. So if I change the content right here, I don't need to refresh or do anything. I can just interact and it's just gonna show me in real time. But don't worry if you don't understand any of this stuff because we're gonna start very slowly. We're gonna start with the design components. We're gonna start using the controls provided by Framer and then slowly get more and more into code and it's gonna start extremely friendly. Those who want to learn more about the design part of Framer X should go to my first course called Design and Code in Framer X where you're gonna learn a lot about creating a layout from scratch, dealing with animations as well as icons and using some of the controls built in because the course that we're learning today is more focused on using design components alongside code components using overrides and pushing your prototype to the next level. Now let's talk about third-party components because they're insanely useful. You can go to the store right here and you can search for example, one that I love is called Icon, and it allows you to generate these icons on the fly, and it's really time-saving. So you can see here that each of these components 
are using that icon generator. And here, if I want to change to a new icon, I can just type the name of the icon and it's going to change right here. And you have different icon sets such as Feather, Material and Font Awesome, and they can be referenced to their respective websites. When you install these components from the store, you can go to your components and scroll down to the bottom. And this is where you're going to find the components that you have installed. So the ones that I like, for example, is the iPhone 10 UI kit, where you have a bunch of elements such as the home button and the status bar, and they are actually live. So if I go right here and you can see that I'm using it right here as a status bar and I can just change to a light style or a dark style. And there are a bunch of options such as the signal, small details, but really cool or the battery when it's low, it becomes red. From the same component, I also use the home indicator where you can switch between light and dark. And then we have also the isometric. So I'm going to show you how that works. So you have your screen. And then typically, if you open this, you can just drag it here and you can connect that to a screen. And it's going to create this perspective uh, mockup of your screen. So you can change the different setting, um, the rotation and stuff like that to have your perfect angle applied to your background. And then we have magic move, which is what I created right here. So if you click the preview, you're going to see the stagger animation. Uh, the way that it works is that you have a begin state and then you have an end state using exactly the same elements so that it connects. It knows from which part to which part it's going to animate. So here I'm using the positioning, so to the left and using also the opacity. And then in the end state, it's just what you see right here. And the magic move is this component right here that connects to the begin state and to the end state by using an event. In this case, the event that I'm using is called automatic, which means unload. And then you have a bunch of animation settings such as the transition effects. So the duration, the easing, but also the staggering. So if you increase the stagger, it's going to take longer for each element to follow up. So for example, here, I put it to 0.2 second and now it takes longer for each one to show. Another really cool component that I use is called map box. It's super simple. It's just a box and then you can uh, customize the theme of the map, but also the location by entering, for example, a city or using search. Then I think you're going to be really blown away by the Mockmatic component. So you just need to drag and drop the component, set it to the size of the presentation, and then you connect that to your screen right here. And then it creates this 3D representation of your mockup. And then you can customize, let's say, the positioning, so the angle, and then you can customize the rotation, for example, different perspective. You can even create an animation. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. So command D and then I'm going to change the angle, the camera, the different positioning, but also you can change the lighting, for example, to blue and to neon. And now if you want to animate this, I'm going to go to Magmatic Animator set the size and then I connect it to the different frames. So I'm going to connect to this one and then to this one. Now, if I want to play the animation, I click on play and you can see this beautiful render and it's animated. One of the pain points for a lot of designers is that you have to find content such as the avatars, for example. In this case, we have used this beautiful tiny faces component and basically it's just a component that allows you to generate randomly these avatars for you and you can change the, the gender if you want to and the different uh, settings for your design. Finally, we've been using Undraw illustrations. If you're not familiar with them, you can go to undraw.co and this is where we have a lot of open source illustrations that you can use for your design. So in this case, it's a component from the store and using this component, I can just 
change directly to whatever illustration that I want. And then I can just change the color as well to fit the design that I have. So Framer is packed with features and it's very well explained in their documentation. They have a bunch of tutorials and examples and their team provides a bunch of examples as Framer files that I put in my collection of files right here. So for example, the one provided by the team is called examples.framerx and here you're gonna find a bunch of animations and code that explains how to achieve these results. And on top of that, there's also another file provided by the community. If you go to the Facebook group of Framer, uh, some of these files are shared as posts. And I thought this one was really useful because using uh, instead of using code components from scratch, you're gonna find overrides instead. So this is used as an override instead of a code component using frame. So when that happens, then instead of like using this entire thing as a code component, you have this uh, design element, which is a rectangle. And then on that rectangle, we are going to use, let's say the file and then the override inside that. This amazing file was shared by Brett on the Framer Facebook community, where you're gonna find similar amazing content that's gonna help on your journey to learn Framer you're going to learn all of that stuff in this course. I just want to thank Framer for allowing me to offer this course for free and for sponsoring my time in creating this extensive course that I've worked on for the past month. With that said, let's create our first design components with overrides in the next section. I'll see you then.